Hiya folks, you're really welcome to this week's episode of John's Garage. You can see I am backed into the corner of a barn, okay? We are in an incredibly lucky position today, folks, and I genuinely mean it. We are going to see cars here today you're not going to see anywhere else in Ireland. I have a huge thank you for the Irish Lancia Owners Club. They have a Facebook page and they also have lanciaireland.com, that webpage. Go there, check it out. I, I mean it, folks. Genuinely, there is cars here I have never seen before. In fact, there's three cars here I've never seen before. It's my first time experiencing them. There's two other cars here which I've seen. I've seen them at car shows, but I've never gotten this up close and personal with them. So listen, usual rules apply when we're exploring barns. If you know the location, keep it closed, okay? If you type it in the comments, I'll delete it, okay? If you reveal it, I prefer to protect this person's privacy. They've been very, very kind to let us in. This is stuff you don't get to see every day. So if you know the location, keep stum. That's your business, it's the owner's business, it's not our business, okay? Other than that, nothing you see is for sale. Everything is here for you to enjoy, and I really hope you take great pleasure in this episode. As I say, I'm so lucky, we're so lucky. Welcome along to John's Garage. This is a barn find special. Let's go. So folks, we are starting in the back corner and today we are going to be focusing on Lancias. And right in front of you, you have a 1958 Lancia Appia. Now, I just want to be clear as well. Somebody got really snarky with me in the first barn find video that I did, that it wasn't a barn find, it was too clean. Listen, we're in a barn, okay? These aren't necessarily barn finds. We're barn exploring is the term I prefer to go with. So, you know it's important if it's under a cover. So, we'll revert, return to that, but we're gonna start with this blue Series 2 or Mark II Lancia Appia, our second generation. It's 1958 example. 1100 narrow block V4 engine fitted to this. Produces about 48 horsepower from the factory. This particular one, I don't know whether the video is up yet or not. I've just come back from test driving it. So it's filmed. If it's already out in public, I'll link it in the video, I'll link it in the description. If not, stay tuned folks. I've driven this car and we filmed it and it is un bloody believable. Okay, look at that beautiful shield on the front of it. Now the owner is here. Uh, how do I describe an enthusiast? He's madly passionate about these cars. Madly, madly passionate. Hugely interested in the brand. But more important than that, like a true enthusiast, he just wants to help owners. Now what I'd say to you folks is, if you have any parts, if you have any old Atlantis like this, or any Atlantis at all, contact me and I'll send your details on to the owner. Basically, I'll show you in a few minutes, he gathers as many parts as he possibly can, can possibly do, and keeps them here safe and just distributes them. He just redistributes them to other owners as they need them. Okay, so it's all about keeping these cars on the road. Look at that interior. Lovely bench seat. Great for courting when you go around a bend. Uh, very comfortable. This car, as I say, I've driven it. To say this is a modern driving experience is nothing short of an understatement. It's well able to keep up with traffic. It's very comfortable. The handling is sure-footed. It even comes with suicide or clamshell doors, depending on how you want to call them. But such a modern driving experience. And then you look down, you come around. I didn't show this in my review, but that's the little door lock. How cool is that? There's your door handle for opening it. Window winder. And of course, as you come back in here, you got a great big ashtray as well on the back of the seat very important for older generation cars because you couldn't sit in the back seat with your carpet with rubber for the driver without having a good cigarette okay anyway as i said there's an in-depth look of this car either on the web either on the youtube page or it's coming but massively massively important car for lancia back in the day they produced about twenty thousand of these over various different generations and what you have here in front, now I said we were going to see one of a kind cars today. This is a one of a kind car. What you have here in front of you folks is again a Lancia Appia. This is a first generation, although it's 1958 as well. Okay, how do you tell this is a first generation? Well, you look here at things like the running lights. Okay, and you look at the side and you see the little indicators. And then I'll just show you the second generation. 
Again, you look at the front, the lights are different. The indicators are in the daylight, or sorry, the uh, parking lights. They double up as indicators as well. Has a little bit of a different front bumper as well to the Mark 1. But when I say this is the only place you're going to see a Lancia Appia commercial van. Just look at that, folks. Incredible condition. Now, in the background, you're going to hear noises, you're going to hear vehicles working, you're going to hear people working. I'm in a working location. As I said, this is somebody's man cave, and I mean it, this is an actual man cave. It's not a business, it's not a club, it's just a man cave. It's somebody who's passionate about a brand. Now, I want to show you this. See the wind deflectors? That's actually a glass wind deflector built into the window, so you can drop down your window, let in a bit of airflow, and that came standard from the factory. Okay. Lancia Appia Consortium printed on it. I'm sure you can Google that. Let's say indicators on the wing. That was a little bit different to the Mark II. And then you have your parking lights and headlamps. So as I say, a little bit of noise in the background, folks. Just ignore it. Stick with me on this, okay? Now, this particular van belongs to a friend of the owner of this man cave, and he's just helping them out, doing a little bit of work on it for them, just to make sure it stays as good as it possibly can. But as I say, hugely rare. Hugely rare car. See these lovely little side mirrors? Now, I want to show you the 1970s equivalent of a Padro Pio sticker. Just look at this. Look at that beautiful, beautiful stitching. Beautiful door handle. And again, see this? That folds away because when you're sitting in here, your driver's knee is up against that. And you obviously don't want to be getting that poked in your knee as you're driving like an Italian driver does. Look at that interior. It's bloody gorgeous. The steering wheel, real 1950s. Look at the beautiful dials. Olio Benzina Lancia. Now, I said I wanted to show you the equivalent of a Padre Pio sticker, and that's here. It's got a Mark II Ford Escort for some reason. Okay. Oh my God, that is so cool. Obviously a driver's prayer or something like that. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. It's my Italian is woeful. But anyway, unlike the other Apria, which I test drove, this one does have a heater. Now you might be wondering, why is this also a 1958? But it's a Mark I look to it. It's because it's a commercial. And they obviously treated the commercial drivers a little bit different. See how that flicks? Okay. But again, they cheaped out, I suppose, a little bit in developing this into a Mark II, just to get the most out of the tooling. Okay, rubber mats, same as the saloon. But what isn't the same as the saloon is the back. It's a commercial. Okay, so let's go around and have a look at this from the back. Now, as I said, this isn't, this vehicle doesn't belong to the owner. They're just doing a couple of little jobs to help out a mate. Because the owner of this place specializes in helping Lancia owners. So this is the rear end of the Appia commercial. Okay, you see that? Bars in the window to protect all your tools and trade goods. They are actual bars. <laughs> Let's have a little look in here. Have a look at these. So you have steel bars. Okay. I suppose the idea is to stop goods sliding in and breaking your glass, but it looks like they're trying to protect every, everything in it. Let's open up this one. Now this is genuinely the coolest man cave I've been in a long, long time. Hope you're wondering what's in here. Well, you have a little bit of trim, and up there is a new engine for this car. It's the old engine has become self-oiling, could I put it that way? Self-lubricating. Anyway, huge load space. One more other thing I like is back here, a little storage area for tires and tools and all that kind of thing. But like, when I say, folks, you aren't going to see this anywhere else, you're not. This is truly a one of a kind. Truly, truly a one of a kind. It's going to lock this properly. Okay. What have we got here? Whoa. 
We got two more cars under covers, folks. Look at this man cave. So look at this man cave, folks. There's parts, there's things here to keep cars going for many, many generations. Okay, this is what the owner has built their hobby into, is just helping other people. And I have a feeling underneath this, the owner has a special project that they've treated themselves to. In fact, I know they have. So I think it's about time we lift the cover on this. We do the front or the back. Well, listen, I'm at the back, so let's do the back first. Let's lift this cover. Let's see what we've got going on here. Appreciate, folks, there's a lot of noise, but it's a case that we gotta go with it. We're in a commercial unit and other units. Other people have rented this. Holy, holy smokes. So, the Appia was the owner's lockdown project. The Apria is their post-lockdown project. Look at the bodywork. It is to die for, but wait, check out these orange lights, folks. I hope this shows up on the camera. It says Lancia Apria in there. Can you see that? And you've got a red light here for when you're driving at night. And you got your number plate light up here, which will reflect up here. Look at these windows. So, you might be looking at the body, even just look at this. It comes down into a sharp, it's like a sword, coming the whole length of the car. Okay, let's go around the front. Let's reveal the front of this. Now, you might be wondering what fits in here. Well, this is Xenophores. Xenophore indicators go in here. Look at these, these wheels. Get your little hubcaps put on over that. Michelin, are they cross ply? They are cross ply tires. Oh no, the radial, sorry. Their radio 165 or 400. Wow, incredible stuff. Again, you can just reveal it here. See that? Little wind deflectors on the back doors, little glass wind deflectors. Incredible stuff. Now, let's lift the front cover. I can see the bumper poking out here. That's an aluminium bumper, folks. Very, very delicate. Very, very delicate. Again, I'm hugely honoured, folks, to be allowed to bring this stuff to you. As I say, massively honoured to be allowed to do this. This is... I arrived here to film the Appia. This was not on the cards. And the owner has been very, very kind to share with us today. Let's come around the front and see this famous Lancia grill. Just look at that, folks. I'm actually going to take a seat here for a second. As I say, hand polished aluminium, it tends to split in the middle, but this one's perfect. Look at that Lancia grill. Absolutely gorgeous. There is a little cap here, which you can open up if you needed to stick a crank bar in there to start the engine. Okay, if your starter failed, but this is obviously fitted with a starter. It's not fitted with headlamps currently, and I'll explain why in a moment. You see the Lancia badge. Folks, I really can't understate how beautiful that grill is. Most grills back then, all curved, and, but this has just got lovely sharp lines. Lovely, lovely sharp lines. Look at the lines up along the bonnet. Again, back into a sword type shape, straight up along. It's literally craftsmanship, folks. Literally craftsmanship. Now, you might be able to see in here, there's no engine fitted or gearbox. I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. But let's take this cover off. Okay, you need to be careful. I don't want to trail the cover on the ground and picking up loads of dust and stuff. So I'm going to put the cover over here. You get a proper look at this car. Holy smokes. Finish with that cover. Just look at that. Absolute beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Sorry if the camera's shaking a little bit, folks, but obviously I am shaking. Suicide doors again, or clamshell doors, depending on what you want to call them. Such solid handles. We'll open it up. Oh, now, folks, you can see why this car is here. It needs the interior completed. So it's a partial project. 
and needs to be loved on a little bit. And that is what the owner is going to do. See that central armrest in the back seat? Beautiful. The fit and finish in here. It's gorgeous. This is maybe one of the only bits of trim left. Let's pull it. Oh, the little glove box. And this here, folks, just in the front is an ashtray for the front seat passenger. So you can fold it away. Look how thick those doors are. Really, really heavy, solid doors. Let's come around to the other side and see if we can get a nice little shot of it. Just look at that. Now, we're really lucky in a way because this is the engine for that car. So, narrow block, I'll show you. Narrow block, it is quite narrow. V4. Again, about 1100cc engine. Come around here. It doesn't look like a V4, you see, this is the thing, but there's the top of one V, there's the top of the other, there's spark plugs then, this is part of the Lancia engine, they're all offset, so one, two, three, four cylinders, okay, and they're all offset, and then beside it, we have the gearbox, okay, you can see where the shifter fits there on top and stuff like that, so that all has to be refitted to the car, as you can see, it's a partial project, it started off, somebody started it, but for whatever reason, was unable to complete but it is going to be completed and the aerodynamic shape is just beautiful now you might be wondering the connection of that and the connection of this the apria or the apia sorry the apria and the apia well let's see sorry i'm getting all my names mixed up here we have the apia is the 58 and the apria the aprilia is the 38 so this is 1938 lancia aprilia and the connection between the two, originally from Switzerland, originally from South Africa, it's actually sitting here in the middle. It's the V4 engine. So the 1958 Appia was Lancia's small car. The 1938 Lancia Aprilia was also the V4 1100cc engine. And this was also the narrow body, the small car for Lancia for 1938. And of course then, the commercial Appia is also a 1958, but as I said, it has the earlier front end on it. Wow, okay. If we got a 1938 Appia V4, sorry, a 1938 Aprilia V4, and a 1958 Appia V4, and a 1958 Appia V4 commercial, what in blazes is back there? Well, I'm gonna tell you folks, it's more Lancias. You know what else I'm gonna tell you? We're going more barn exploring. We're going back there and we're gonna have a look. What is this? I already know what's under here, folks. Do you want to know what's under here? I can tell you it's also a 1968. And I can tell you it's goddamn gorgeous. Incredibly modern car for its time. I'm going to lift off the cover. I'm going to make sure and get this cover off very, very carefully all around the car. Look at those. On the motorcycle. I don't even know what else is in there. It's definitely a BSA, I think. I'll be really careful here with this, folks. Obviously, not my car. And again, I'm operating one-handed. Just want to be careful not to snag it on anything and break anything. God forbid. Let's take it off at this corner. Oh God, it's gorgeous. I can tell you there's one slight modification with this car in that it has ooh, lots of wood here to keep you warm. It has its original bumpers removed, so that's no bad thing. Okay, really, I think, sharpens up the look of the car. But you're going to get to see, I promise, as this is the covers off. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this van as it should be used. I'm going to open up that back door. And I'm going to take the cover of this car if I can get it out there, look at those motorcycles. I bet some of you guys are interested in motorcycles. I literally know nothing about them. <laughs> I'm rubbish when it comes to them. Okay, let's go. Temp number two. Again, I've just been really careful with the cover. It's in there. Whoa, there's a strong light. And that light is revealing. A 1968 Fulvia Saloon. Okay, this is a 1300cc V4. 
Again, an evolution of the narrow block V4 engine. And isn't it absolutely to die for? Now, this particular example is, I would say an evolution of a Mark I or Series 1 to Series 2. So it has the Series 1 engine and gearbox, but it has the Series 2, sorry, the Series 1 engine and gearbox and the Series 2 body and fittings. So it's a rare car in its own right. That big chrome strip up the bonnet. Absolutely love, love these. I was asking the owner, I said, aren't these gorgeous with the finish on them? They said they're plasti dipped chrome. So they're chromed plastic essentially. And they're just absolutely to die for. They literally don't make them like this anymore. More's the pity. But anyway, this hasn't been out in the road for a number of years. So some of you may or may not recognize it, I'm not sure. Um, currently a gearbox fault, which the owner is going to rectify. Now, before anyone says it, these used to rust like hell. They did, the owner knows this. Alloys aren't original actually, just to say. They're Competizone, I think. Let me bend down and have a little look. I did read it earlier. They're Compomotive, made in England. Do you know what I actually am going to come down here and get? Get another look at that. The Aprilia and the Appia. I'm coming down here to get this little flashlight the owner gave me earlier. And I meant to have it in my hand and I forgot it. But anyway, and I think to get another look at these cars. Look at that. How goddamn beautiful is that? Now, highly advanced car back in its day. So the owner tells me this particular example has never been painted. It all, sorry, has never been welded. It's low mileage and it's original mileage. So I want to show you this. See that inside in there? That's in the inside of the car, it's plastic. Again, it's a, a buffeting or draft excluder. So you wind down the window, no draft goes in on top of you, but you get the fresh air. Incredible stuff. Anyway, see the big solid door handles? Beautiful condition of everything here. Again, push down the button. But this is the thing I think is really cool. Okay, so I'll show you this. The door pops. There's a mechanical setup which actually pops the door for you. So if you watch, I'm gonna press the button and the door is gonna pop. And then you just open up the door, okay? Now, another thing I absolutely love in this. Safety markers, and they're working in the doors. How bloody cool is that? And in case you're wondering, am I making that up about the door popping? I'm not. So if you look here, see the little a little bit here, it pushes out the door, okay? Anyway, in the Fulvia Saloon, the more basic one, okay, these aren't chrome, but in the Fulvia Coupe, they were. So let's have a little look at the interior of this car. Gorgeous. Now, the setup in here, although I appreciate modern ergonomics, the radi radio right in front of the passenger is a bit hot, but the setup, it's truly modern in my eyes. It really, really feels like a modern car. But before we get there, let's have a little look at the door panel itself. It's worth noting. Armrest, huge big chunky grab handle. If I work without the light for a second, would that improve visibility? And this here then, you pull it back. That's for opening the door. And again, window winder and quarter lights again. Now, moving around to the interior, I'll just get in. By the way, that interior is original. And one thing to say to you, it's vinyl, okay? Um, it's original, it's unmarked. It's just a testament to the condition of this car. So, here, I just think this is incredible. Lovely little air vent, okay? Radio right in front of the passenger. Okay, so it's right in front of the passenger, then you have the clock. Great big fulvia. How bloody cool is that? Down here then you have slider controls for the heater and ventilation. Speaker for the radio. Gorgeous big ashtray. Wait, I'll pull that out for you all to see. Great big ashtray. You probably smoke about six cigars or cigarettes at one time in that. Okay, and then a little bit of storage. And as I said, four-speed gearbox fitted to this particular one. Come up here. We have Hornage. It's not working for some reason. Maybe when the car is switched off. But we also have... I think that's cruise control and a few other bits and pieces in this car. Rev counter, speedometer in kilometers per hour, 46,000 kilometer, kilometers, man. 
insane from new 46,000 kilometers from new and the mileage is genuine beautiful driving position great comfort in this car I can tell you the seats are absolutely to die for and again I would say this is really the car in which the tree box saloon body style was really defined absolutely gorgeous and I do appreciate the light isn't great folks but bear with me this is what happens when you go barn exploring you're gonna have bad light okay and you just gotta put up with it anyway spring loading on the back doors as well windy windows keep you fit but more important than keeping fit with windy windows is this massive ashtray for each passenger okay rubber mats back here again a hint of the practicality which Lancia were getting at with the cars and lovely chrome detailing and finishing. Now you might be wondering what these two big bolts back here, they're seatbelt mounting points, but the car was only fitted with seatbelts in certain markets and not where this one was sold. Absolutely right. gorgeous. Now, I'm trying to see what a bonnet pull is in this folks. I'll come back to it though. I will come back to it. Fortunately, that LED battery has gone and died on me. Hmm. Anyway, I'll come back. We'll have a look underneath the bonnet of this car in a few minutes. This is their lockdown lads pad. And I'm not kidding you folks, I'm actually serious. So they came down here and they worked away in their cars during lockdown. Kept them very happy. Underneath here, I know what's underneath here. And I'm going to show you what's underneath here. So folks, as I said, we're barn exploring today. And we're having so much fun. I actually never showed you the rear end of the Lancia Fulvia saloon. So we'll have to do that. And let's just get this cover back here on that first. Okay, Fulvia saloon. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Really has that tree box saloon look to it. Kind of the first of those models. Really sharp styling though in my eyes. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. I can't get over it. Anyway, let's continue with what we're doing here. Oh, more covers. More covers can only mean one thing. There's something worth protecting. But what on earth is worth protecting? Now the owner tells me that all of these cars get driven and get driven get driven as God intended okay so if you ever see him out and about I'd suggest you try and keep up and this guy's taking me for a drive in the Appia and he ain't kidding you he is serious holy smokes folks we got a Lancia Fulvia Coupe absolutely gorgeous now the owner does use this car it's regularly taken out I know it looks like it's at the back of the collection but it is used they tell me that originally this is fitted with a 1.3 litre engine. However, today that engine's been bored out to 1400 cc's for extra power. Let's have a little look if we can get in around it. Gorgeous steel wheels, lovely chrome center cap. They're just a thing of beauty, really. Just a thing of absolute beauty. As I say, folks, we're so incredibly lucky. These are not cars which we see regularly on Irish roads, but they are here in Ireland and it's important for us to document them. Oh, thank God we have a light in here. My flash lamp has died. Look at this lovely warm glow. This one, of course, being right and drive. It's a dogleg five speed gearbox. As I said, engine is 1.3. It's the original engine still fitted. It's just bored out a little bit further. And again, beautiful attention to detailing. Beautiful attention to detail. Let's see if I can get in here a little bit. Just being careful with the amount of space I have. Now, mileage indicated 86,000. This car has been around. It's a little bit hard to see. Okay, a little bit hard for me to see here, folks, exactly what's going on. But yeah, it is gorgeous. Okay, you've got your slider controls for the ventilation system there. Okay, and as I said, dog leg, five speed gearbox. Beautiful, twin spoke wooden steering wheel. 
Is that wooden? No, that's plastic, sorry. That's not wooden. I'm going to guess that the interior of this car has been retrimmed, but I could be wrong. Unusual. Frameless doors. Absolutely gorgeous. Utterly, utterly gorgeous. Let's make sure I leave everything as I get it. Just look at that. Now, again, this car isn't minty original. This car is used and loved. And just folks, I genuinely, getting to explore these collections, we're just so incredibly lucky today. Look at that beautiful attention to detailing. Four headlamps, four lights across the front, indicators fashioned into the bumpers. A beautiful, beautiful Lancia grill. Lancia badge up front. Okay, now I'm going to pause the camera for a second because I want us to have a good look at the engine in this car and how it's set up. Actually, I can see the owner coming back. They don't want to be on camera, so I'm going to stop this for one second and I'm going to ask them to open it. Bear with me. For Okay, folks, we're back again. Before I start, I asked the owner, what are all these? They're all Hondas. Uh, there's two step trues, and I think he said a 50 SS as well. Uh, smaller kind of moped type bike. So I know nothing about bikes, maybe you guys do. But anyway, back here, underneath the bonnet of the Fulvia Saloon. So the Fulvia Coupe will look very, very similar to this, but I wanted to show you this because it's so unusual in terms of modern layout that I felt it was worth having a look at. So let's put this all into perspective. This is front wheel drive. You can see, you can point to it. You can see the front wheel is here, but note the engine is way out front. Okay, and we asked the owner, I said, would the engine being so heavy and so far out front not give this kind of woeful handling? You know, would it not cause it to understeer through bends and just with the nose not be pulling the car around the place? So they said, first up, John, you've got to understand this car weighs in totality. 960 kgs it is a light light car moving on from that he said the subframe system counteracts the engine hanging out over the front wheels so what you have is the engine here but behind it down there it's a little hard to see is a really heavy gearbox and that's more centrally mounted but that isn't all all right now i'm hoping i can do this with the camera the light is a bit of a challenge but we'll see so down there you can see, I can point to it, you can see there that that is the subframe. Okay, and the subframe runs right to the front of the car. And the subframe then goes underneath the gearbox, underneath the engine. You see these, these rise up from the subframe and attach and mount up here. So these are separate units. These can be unbolted themselves. They mount here to the bodywork. Okay, behind these though, the subframe goes further back and it's all angled down and it goes, it kind of mounts more centrally in under the driver's seat, feet about here on both sides. So in other words, what you have is the engine being held up. How do I do this? Hel Bleh, get my hands the right way. Held up like that at an angle and it's all pointing, all the weight is being redirected down towards the center of the car. So in other words, it's more centrally mounted even though it's out the front. It's unusual. He said it's a very compl complicated way of getting around the problem, but it does get around the problem, okay? It does give it very, very sharp, very, very entertaining handling according to the owner and they love it. But what I love is the fact that this is so rust free and unpainted. Now, you might be wondering, because I was wondering, what is this rough finish on the bonnet? It's soundproofing attached to the bonnet, okay? It's basically sprayed on, dampens the engine sound. The other thing I love here is this. This is a ram to help you lift the bonnet and hydraulic ram. And other than that, if the battery is all hooked up and if you had the headlamps on in the car, this under bonnet light would also work as well and activate. But again, narrow block V4 engine, and this is kind of the last of them. Well, I suppose this Fulvia is 1975. So that's really the last of the V4 Lancia narrow block engines. So the amazing thing is here, folks, we can go all the way from 1938, okay, 1958, 58 again with the van, 68 with the Fulvia saloon, crossover saloon between a Mark I and Mark II, all the way up to 1975 to the last of the Fulvias. They all have an evolution of the same engine. 
it's incredible folks it's absolutely utterly incredible and the other thing that's incredible is the size of this fulvia saloon and it's low weight it's amazing okay it's absolutely amazing so yeah god damn look here we i'm gonna take one beautiful last look here at everything folks you see it all this is really and i mean it folks this is not something you're going to get to see anywhere else this is here the owner is very very happy for me to share this okay but again i go back to what i said at the start location is private don't put it in the comments or i'll delete it next up nothing you see is for sale but the owner does request that if you have any lancia parts if you've all lancias in any condition and you'd like to donate them or pass them on um that he'd love to redistribute them to people who need them okay to keep these cars on the road they're so rare but we've got them here and we have five incredibly rare cars the fulvia coupe the fulvia coupe the fulvia saloon the appia van incredibly rare the appia van is unbelievably rare okay the aprilia 1938 and the appia from 1958 folks you've no idea just how lucky we are today I'm going to hopefully stand back here where I started and get a little look at everything that's going on. Get one last look. It's just the door opening behind me. And with that, folks, I'm just going to turn the camera around to myself for one second and say goodbye. So, folks, with that, we're done with today's uh, barn exploring. Again, huge thank you to the owner. Huge thank you to Lancia Ireland Owners Club as well. Again, lanciaireland.com and they also have a Facebook page. I'll link both of those in the description. But folks, if you have any more collections of incredibly rare and unusual cars around Ireland that you'd like to share, contact me. And again, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And if anyone has any parts lying in a shed or would like to help out, please contact me and I'll pass your details on to the owner. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.